Are we ready? Three, two, one. It's the end of Texas as we know it. It's the end of... And that's where I have to cut it off before YouTube decides that's worth a copyright strike. So welcome back to the podcast once again. Everybody, for anybody new, this is usually uh, primarily a podcast. So whatever's on the screen is usually like price charts, temperature graphs, production charts, and everything. But it's not going to change very often. And as always, if anybody does want to support me or help me out, PayPal and Patreon links are both down in the description below and in the top in comment. So the lower 48 states have had an interesting last several days, it seems, in what we're going to just dub the Great Winter Storm of 2021. Part 1, at least, because there's a Part 2 coming. So basically, lawn story not entirely short. The jet stream dipped way down south and pulled a whole bunch of cold air down from the subarctic. And it did so rather quickly, quicker than all of the air uh, could actually follow it. So the mass of air it did pull down also, uh, also started expanding, particularly uh, in the center, which ended up being over the Great Plains region. And as the air expands and gets less dense, it uh, cools down, because heat, as we measure it, is molecule collision. So when you expand air or expand a gas, uh, make it less dense, that cools it down. It's kind of the same way your air conditioning system and your refrigerator works. So that brought, uh, by lower 48 standards, super cold. And it didn't come as just super cold air. It also came with ice storms and blizzards, and even without the snow making it a blizzard blizzard, in a lot of places it also just came with high winds. So all in all, uh, this compiled together to produce the Great Winter Storm of 2021 and uh, the end of Texas as we know it. And where it starts to tie into us and this podcast in particular, it caused a huge explosion of heating demand and also a uh, bit of a crash in natural gas production which correspondingly sort of stalled the explosion in heating demand because uh, not all of it could actually be met. So to start off with natural gas production, particularly down in Texas, uh, natural gas production tanked because of freezing effects as extreme cold temperatures along with ice storms uh, started to cripple a lot of the natural gas production and transportation infrastructure, the pipelines which isn't an automatic given with uh, cold weather, as oil and gas are produced in cold climate and arctic regions all the time. So there are countermeasures that allow it to uh, actually function, you know, perfectly normal. However, said countermeasures uh, were not in place in the infrastructure in Texas and the southern states. So when everything hit, it eventually did cause freeze-ins. And uh, so natural gas production dropped. In total average for U.S. natural gas production numbers, the production and demand numbers running from Wednesday to Wednesday, so this data being from the week up to and including the 17th of this month, U.S. natural gas production went from averaging 102 billion cubic feet per day down to averaging only 88.7. And that's an overall average. At the lowest individual point on the worst day, it went even 10 further down from that, down to 78.7. And in terms of U.S. natural gas consumption over the week up to and ending on February 17th, the U.S. averaged almost 130 billion cubic feet of natural gas consumption, exact average coming out as 128.9. And at the highest individual points, it did get up to uh, the mid-130s, and would have gone higher if it were not for the freeze-ins. Uh, if it were not for those, it looks like it would have gone up to a demand level on the worst day of between 150 and 155 billion cubic feet per day of natural gas consumption. However, as I just said, uh, there were a lot of freeze-in incidents along the infrastructure and the production wells, so there simply was not enough available for that, uh, that would be additional consumption level. Now, among the specific numbers, uh, the individual demand categories, consumption by natural gas fired power plants rose from the uh, mid 20s or the upper mid 20s up to 31.7 billion cubic feet per day. And a lot of that being from the Southern states because in the Southern states, a lot of heating is electric heating and natural gas fire power plants are the ones that you can sort of dial and adjust 
the output level of the quickest. So they're the ones that usually turn up and down in response to a rapidly fluctuating electricity consumption levels. And those levels probably would have been even higher, uh, most likely in the upper 30s, if it were not uh, for the massive grid collapse in Texas. As you are probably also aware, uh, Texas's power grid ended up collapsing for the same reason that uh, a lot of the infrastructure ended up failing, because it's Texas, so it uh, wasn't so it wasn't winter prepared or winter protected. And obviously that's partially understandable because this isn't a frequent occurrence, but still not doing it is is still just ultimately kind of stupid. So Texas's power grid collapsed. And uh, Texas has a rather large population, uh, nearing 30 million. But a lot of Texas's electricity is uh, generated by natural gas-fired power plants. So in the absence of that additional consumption from Texas, U.S. consumption of natural gas by natural gas-fired power plants stayed down in the lower 30s, a bit under 32, at 31.7 billion cubic feet per day. U.S. natural gas heating demand went up and over 50, up to 51.6 billion cubic feet per day. And again, that was the general average for the week period. So that means uh, on the worst particular day, it was likely about 20% higher. It was uh, probably up to or even over 60 billion cubic feet per day of heating demand. And even aside from where it probably was, where it probably would have been would have been even higher, uh, maybe upper 60s, maybe over 70, who really knows, uh, because not all the heating demand could be met, because a lot of natural gas, uh, like we said, got stalled in the pipelines or even at the wells themselves. But going through the other numbers, uh, U.S. natural gas exports on LNG tankers had to be curtailed. They previously, up to this point, have been heading out at a pretty consistent rate of 11 billion cubic feet per day, However, uh, they had to be stalled, and for the past week only averaged about 6.2, as the U.S. had to keep more natural gas behind for itself. And also, again, in Texas, uh, some of the pipelines and delivery infrastructure heading out to the LNG export terminals uh, kind of got, you know, frozen in. Now, for the spot prices which are different uh, from the general natural gas prices. The regular natural gas price uh, we usually quote is from the market, which is a more medium time frame price and also a futures price technically for natural gas uh, to be used two months in the future, roughly. The natural gas spot price is sort of the purchaser end price of the moment uh, that can actually fluctuate based on sort of instantaneous demand levels. So the spot price uh, during severe winter events in particular does tend to spike up a bit. Uh, in particular, I believe it was 2018, or technically I guess the combined winter of 2017 and 2018. Uh, during some of the events of that winter, for example, it spiked up to like $8 per thousand cubic feet, whereas normally it just tends to follow the, uh, the market price. This a uh, spot price spike from this event was uh, three times what the one back in the 2017-2018 winter was. It jumped up to just under $24 per thousand cubic feet. Whereas before this event, it was following the futures price and was sort of hovering, you know, right around $3 per thousand cubic feet. So for anyone paying uh, for natural gas during these past several days of this severe winter event, by lower 48 standards at least, you're going to be charged at least for the natural gas you used during those last few days, uh, particularly the coldest days. You're going to be charged eight times as much as you are normally charged for it. So prepare to uh, see some decent upward spikes in your heating bill uh, come the end of the month. Now for the U.S. natural gas storage inventory numbers. Unfortunately, those don't come as immediately as the production and demand numbers. U.S. natural gas storage inventory data runs from Friday to Friday. So uh, the U.S. natural gas storage inventory data released this week 
is technically for the past week. So this is for the week that ended February 12th. The week that will end uh, on February 19th that will include and display the effects of this interesting event, that will be released next week. However, as you may or may not remember, uh, the past week, the prior week, did have a, uh, a decent bit of extreme cold for a number of states, so heating demand was already pretty high. So U.S. natural gas storage inventories were drawn down by a decent amount already the prior week. U.S. natural gas inventories were withdrawn downwards by 237 billion cubic feet, dropping them from 2.52 down to 2.28 trillion cubic feet in storage. In comparison to normally at this time of year, on average, they are around 2.22. And last year, at this particular time in the year, they were up at 2.39. So because of, you know, all the stuff that happened uh, last year, U.S. natural gas uh, storage inventories ended up getting sort of overbuilt beyond their normal range. However, it looks like these events are really quickly drawing it back down towards a normal setting and are honestly probably about to plunge it below normal levels. As last week, that ended uh, February 12th, had them decreasing by a total of 237 billion cubic feet, which was just from a number of states having some pretty cold weather. Uh, this extreme super winter storm event, I expect, uh, probably produced a withdrawal of in excess of 300 billion cubic feet from the inventories, but we won't find out until next week. For the regular natural gas market future prices, they have recently made it back up over $3 per thousand cubic feet, and at their high point during this week, uh, they got up to almost $3.30. However, now they've dropped back down to $3.05 per thousand cubic feet. Now to also tack on some oil as well, U.S. oil production I was expecting by now to start at least slowly ticking back up over 11. However, it looks like it's still being held off for the moment and actually just took a uh, sudden dip. Not a huge dip, but from 11 down to 10.8 million barrels per day. U.S. oil consumption, however, U.S. oil demand has returned to complete normal levels. As of the past few weeks, it has returned to and stayed above 20 million barrels per day, which is part of its normal present-day range of between 20 to 22. This particular time, coming all the way up to a bit under 20.7 million barrels per day of oil consumption. With the individual numbers uh, comprising that, the major ones being U.S. gasoline consumption, 8.4 million barrels per day, uh, normally, in present day, it would be between 9 and 10. Diesel fuel consumption, which always uh, goes higher in the winter because, you know, there's a lot of heavy equipment and vehicles and stuff uh, roaming around trying to clear out snow and uh, maintain stuff. U.S. diesel fuel consumption coming in at almost 4.5, 4.45 million barrels per day. U.S. jet fuel consumption now starting to consistently stay above a million. Granted, still close down to one million, as opposed to under normal global circumstances, it would be up between 1.6 and 2.1. This time coming in at 1.17 million barrels per day. And propane consumption. Uh, because it's winter, it would be higher anyways, and because uh, this winter has gotten interesting, U.S. propane consumption, and these numbers are technically for last week, mind you, uh, came in at 1.87 million barrels per day equivalent. The week before that, it got up to, uh, I believe, 2.1 or 2.2. And when we get the numbers for this week, next week, uh, I think it, it might exceed that prior number. Normally, during the summer at least, when heating demand is almost non-existent, uh, propane consumption is around... 600 or 700,000 barrels per day equivalent, most of which is uh, being used to make propylene to uh, be turned into plastic. However, once the colder months start, then heating demand picks up and some portion of U.S. houses and buildings are heated with propane. So propane demand then jumps up, uh, typically going up and staying over 1 million 
throughout the uh, colder months, and sometimes uh, during specific mega cold events, it uh, can spike up and over too. For U.S. crude oil inventories, uh, I know I haven't uh, spoken about them for several weeks. When I last mentioned them, uh, they had recovered a bit, back up to about 490 million barrels in storage. Well, over the last uh, several weeks, they've been getting drawn back down as U.S. Uh, demand numbers have gone back up into normal range. Meanwhile, uh, U.S. orders or U.S. imports had uh, been decreasing over the last several weeks. Uh, they've been getting drawn down. This week in particular, they were drawn down by another 7.3 million barrels and are now down to just under 462 million barrels in storage, which is roughly back to a, a bit below, I believe, I think it was 480, back to a bit below where they were just before the whole 2020 scenario happened last year, in which they already were a bit elevated, as normally throughout the prior years, they had on average uh, been in the 300s. So they are still going down now and are starting to slip back below the elevated position that uh, they were at just before the oversupply uh, period during last spring when they got all the way up from about 480 up to 550. So in response to this, uh, which isn't just happening for the U.S., inventories around the world are continuing to be drawn down. Granted, in a lot of regions, uh, that might be starting to stop soon, since, as I mentioned in uh, the previous episode, I'll have a link to that, uh, Saudi Arabia looks like it's not going to be keeping its promise to... Uh, add additional production cuts to itself to make up for other members of the OPEC Plus agreement uh, breaking away. But for now, U.S. inventories are down to 462, or a bit below it. And oil prices, in response to all of this, have continued climbing. And especially since their futures prices, and uh, after the winter starts to end, uh, you know, two months from now, they would expect oil demand to start increasing anyways. And also, as the vaccine keeps going through and virus-related uh, restrictions keep being lifted, that's only going to add to that effect. So the current uh, oil market price has made it back up over, uh, for a couple days at least, $60 per barrel. It got up to about 61 and has fallen back down as of this recording uh, to a bit under 60 and that is where it sits as of the moment. So that's that for uh, this whole Great Winter Storm event. I will absolutely pray for the survival and safety of everybody. Thank you all for listening. I like if you enjoyed and everything. PayPal and Patreon links are both down there. Only do so if you actually can. May God bless and absolutely protect you all. And I will see you all around next time.